So the project I've been doing with the Raspberry Pi has, uh, has gone really well. I'm really impressed with the software. Um, we use it quite a lot on the boat, you know, the monitoring side of it, especially around the batteries. The thing is, I've started to notice that it is slowing down a little bit or, or the demand that's put on the Raspberry Pi 3 is quite high. So I've made a little purchase. I bought myself a couple of new cables because I'm going to need them. I bought myself a new case because this is something that um, I need to address with the current one, the, the cooling. I see regular temperatures are around 70 degrees. So I wanted to try and address this in a Mark II version. So I bought myself a new case. Storage. Storage is one of them things with the SD cards that um, you can have concerns with. Um, they can fail. Mine hasn't. Mine's been pretty reliable, but it's also a weakness. So um, um, we'll see what difference that makes in terms of booting um, and general application speed. It fits in that case really nicely as well. So that's another reason I've gone for that one. And I've gone for a Raspberry Pi 8 gig um, model. So it's Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM um, against the current Raspberry Pi 3, which has got 1 gig. So we should see quite a lot of improvement. The current software is only 32 bit, so it can't actually use all of that memory per application. However, it just means there's more scope for the future. So we've got one of those. And also this little device here, this is an ESP32. Um, and obviously I wanted to do quite a bit with this, but we've been sailing basically, <laughs> that, that's, that's it. So now that winter's come, I'd like to have a little bit of a play with this. This has got Wi-Fi built into the chip um, and there's some programs, again, all written by very, very talented people. Um, I'm just basically implementing it, I'm following the guides. Um, but um, yeah, they've written um, some software for this and you can use this basically as a remote sending device. That's the easiest way to describe it. You can locate this somewhere else, say engine compartment, without giving away too many ideas of what I'm going to use it for. Um, but yeah, so you've got Wi-Fi on there, power that up. Again, very low power consumption, loads of options for sensors and outputs and things. So that's going to appear at some point. Um, and I've got a couple of ideas of what I'd like to do with it and what I'd like to monitor on, on that. But there'll be more on that later. So if we start with the case. Um, it's a solid aluminium case. And um, it's got a small uh, sort of stuck on part at the back here, which is magnetic, which covers the, the GPIO pins. They're all labelled and they're also colour coded, which is really nice. Um, outputs on the back. As I say, it's aluminium, so it's going to help with the um, heat. So the heat will dissipate through this case itself rather than the tiny, tiny heat sink I've got on mine at the moment. I mean, I know that's an issue anyway, but. Um, we've got some active cooling here and this fan can be controlled by the software. These two parts here are where um, it actually makes contact with the Raspberry Pi. Um, and um, one will be the CPU and one will probably be the uh, GPU. Um, and then obviously that heat is dissipated across this surface and that fan blows onto that surface to keep it cool. So get really good reviews, good solid case. Um, one of the other nice things about it though is it gives two hdmi full-size hdmi outputs so when you switch to a raspberry pi 4 you get mini hdmi um but this will give full-sized uh, hdmi which i didn't think about when i ordered the hdmi cable <laughs> um, i forgot um that i didn't actually need that but i've got one anyway just in case and the other thing is that the power changes as well we, we moved to uh, usb c rather than micro usb on the old uh, raspberry pi so that um, small adapter plugs into the side, it brings the audio jack to the back um, and as I say it brings the two HDMI's from uh, mini or micro, I'm not quite sure which ones they are, to full size HDMI on the back of the case. This little board at the bottom is the um, module where the um, storage memory and the SSD will sit, so this sits in here. Um, and then as you can see, there's a USB 3 port with this little attachment here. Um, and that basically allows that to be plugged into one of the ports on the Raspberry Pi. So when the Raspberry Pi is in place on top of it, that uh, joins the two together. And that's how you get your connection. Again, not a lot of changes here, just um, improvements in the board, uh, faster processor, I believe, more, a lot more memory. Um, and uh, USB 3 this time. And I think there's a couple of other changes in terms of, of Bluetooth and also uh, Wi-Fi. So again, improvements there. Here's the micro SD card. 
So here's the SSD. Um, and it's got 240 gigabytes of space on it, so we're, we're, we're not going to get through all of that. But again, hopefully that'll improve speed and also uh, give a little bit of re reliability. Um, yeah, we'll, give it, we'll run some tests and see, see what happens. So we need to take the screw out of this, um, mount the SSD on there, um, mount the Raspberry Pi on here with the thermal uh, paste. So you get a little pack of, of thermal paste, little squares to put on there. Uh, and then fix everything together, um, including this small uh, daughter board that goes on it. Okay, so let's get started. two clear plastic pads on them that need to come off. So we want always on, that's the other thing, just change this jumper. So there's a power, actually a power button on this um, and that's got a number of different functions but for me, where, where mine's located, I, I want as soon as power is applied for the Raspberry Pi to turn on, so you just need to alter the jumper here to always on rather than the default. So that's that done. And then I guess we just have to try and align those GPI opens up to there. fire up and see what it'll do. Okay. Okay, so I've just booted now with the Pi 4. You can see it's changed the resolution, but it's actually started up. So I copied from the Pi 3 across to the Pi 4 on this little USB. And uh, yeah, it's booted up. So what I'll try and do now is I'll use the uh, SD card copier again. It's very slow with the booting from USB. Extremely slow. Okay, so let's see now if we can just copy from one to the other. So from the USB stick to the drive. Now I believe you need this option checked. So it start, I won't record this, it's going to take forever. Okay, so a little bit of an update as to where we are. Hopefully you can see everything on the uh, on the picture there. Um, so when I last um, was talking on the video, um, I was just about to fire up the Raspberry Pi. I've had a lot of issues getting this working, to be perfectly honest. Um, and that's why you can see that the drive is actually in this external enclosure. It's all working now, so I'm just going to power it up and just show you actually how quick this is now, because it's really, really fast. So if we apply some power... Hear the fan starting up. Just grab my keyboard. And within a couple of seconds, we are pretty much at the desktop. So that's there you go, and the fan's um, quieting down now because, again, the, the cooling on the fan, um, you're able to configure all of that. So as you can see, it, it fires up really quick, so it's definitely worth it. However, it's been a real pain to get there. So first things, let's just sort of address this. Um, so if you can see now from these screenshots, I've had some real difficulty uh, actually imaging the, the drive. So um, initially when um, I plugged everything together, I was obviously using a small... Uh, SD card um, with everything that um, was configured on the previous model. So I basically put it put it all together and um, ran the updates and away we went. I then tried, I went onto the Pi um, 
I thought, right, okay, next step then is system two, uh, sorry, is uh, accessories, uh, SD card copier, and I basically want to make a copy from one to the other. So this is the easiest way to do that. If you've got an existing pie that's all set up, so then you would select the uh, card uh, as the source device and you want to copy to the external drive. Um, so I tried that and it didn't work. I was getting errors, I was getting uh, read write errors, it would fail on uh, trying to partition the drive. So I kind of thought there's, there's, there must be something running in the background and that's stopping me doing this. So then I took the drive back out of the case um, because you, you can just basically take the bottom off um, and you, you're left with a USB port and then I've plugged it into the Mac and then tried to image it with just a standard image to see if that was the issue. Um, and again, I was getting sort of read write issues. So I'm starting to think there's not much reliability in this or there's some sort of manufacturing fault with the with the actual drive itself. Let's send it back. So I sent it back. Um, the the Pi got really good with me and basically said, yeah, sounds like that you've, you've received a, a, a Duff device there. We'll send you another one. Next one arrived, came back, went through the entire process again, exactly the same results. I've checked that everything was um, up to date because the Raspberry Pi firmware that you get uh, on your Raspberry Pi can be different. So depending on when it was manufactured will depend on what firmware was put on it. And there's there's obviously later versions there, they're, they're addressing bugs and, and all sorts of things as, as things progress. So it's always a good idea to update. So you can do that a number of ways. Um, you can go through and um, uh, use the open plotter way to, to update. You can load a, a terminal um, and you can do things like uh, sudo apt uh, update, that's the right one. And it'll go off and it will look for all the packages, make sure everything is up to date. Um, and once it's done that, you do a sudo apt full upgrade. Um, and that's always a, a great way of making sure that all the packages are up to date. I'll just let that finish. The other thing that um, is another useful thing to sort of start checking what uh, bootloaders on there, because originally, obviously, all of these devices used to boot from SD cards and they didn't boot from USB. So that's a little bit more of a, um, a later uh, addition now that um, SSDs are, are so much cheaper. Um, so again, nip back to the terminal um, and uh, run uh, ras raspy dash config so uh, sudo raspy raspy dash config um, and in here you can check uh, sort of you can do again you can also do the same process of updating but you can go into the advanced options and you can see what the boot order and the bootloader version is so again make sure that's on the latest and not default so that'll also help you um, make sure you've got the latest software on board and hopefully all of the issues will go away so just bring it back to the, the fault that I had. So then I, I went away and I bought this um, enclosure, which basically converts the uh, SSD, which is, uh, I think these are M2s. Yeah, so it's an M2 SSD. So the, the, the type of connector here, it basically converts that type of connector to USB. And I plugged that in today, um, plugged the new uh, SSD, uh, the stick into it and it instantly worked no issues whatsoever SD card copy completed in about a minute two minutes most and um, it's now running as you can see straight from there um, so my thinking is now that there's actually a fault either with the small um, connector that they give you which is basically just USB to USB I haven't actually got anything like that to try and check or well, there's actually a fault on the board because I'm using the same power supply I'm using the same port on the uh, Pi 4 so the only differences are this device and the actual tray that's sitting in the bottom of here so the circuitry and, and components are on that tray and this small connector to um, to connect everything together um, so yeah, so I just wanted to give you a bit of an update really as to, to where I got, there you go, see 10, pa 10 packages can be upgraded, even though I've upgraded this quite recently, 10 packages can be upgraded, run apt list, upgradable to see them. Um, I've got to update my maps um, because um, now that I've changed hardware, the, the licensing agreement in there has meant my max, maps have expired. I was kind of expecting that anyway, 
so that's fine i need to upgrade them the, the one year that i purchased is coming to an end so i'm not too worried about that but um, just in terms of like loading multiple applications i could never do this before i could never on the pi 3 have um, a web browser open at the same time as open cpn that would crash for me i would just basically run out of memory um, but now i can have multiple um browsers basically open showing different information um, which is going to be really really useful so um, Kip's just loading there Grafana's uh, loading and again you know in the videos I would have cut little bits out of this but this is just that's live that's how fast it now is um, I know I've not got anything connected really as such but I can't see that making a lot of difference because it never did before um, but yeah it's 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 really fast and the other thing that I've noticed, obviously, now that the, the Pi's got more memory, if I go into this and you can start to see some of the uh, stats for CPU and memory, um, we're not using any swap file. So previously, the swap file would have been used on my Pi, um, and that means basically that it was writing to the SD card because it was running out of memory. So my memory would have been at full because only having a gig, um, and then it would have started to use the swap file to try and help it and, and not crash. And as I say... Previously, when I've opened OpenCPN and the browser at the same time, one of them's crashed before long because basically it's just ran out of memory. But as you can see now, I'm coming up to a gig and I've, I've managed to get it just over a gig by loading loads of different things. Um, and it's 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 still running really, really well. So definitely worth um, persevering with. Um, I'm obviously going to follow up now um, with the Pi Hut on if there's anything further that we can test. And if there is, I'll, I'll, I'll just document that. But... Um, I'll see what they want to do about this case now. It'd be a shame really to send the whole lot back, but I would imagine that's what I'm going to have to do. Um, and then rebuild the, the case with the pie in. Um, and hopefully that'll get um, rid of the issue that I've been having.